situation was. I ran the house because nigga kept picking with me. Shot in the crib. Dad, like, what you doing in the house? So I don't want to play. He said, that nigga picking with you again, ain't he? I'm like, nah, dad. He said, nah. Bring your ass on. <laughs> nah, that nah. <laughs> he snatched me outside, took me to the street. Fight this nigga. I said, he going to beat me up. He said, if you fucking cry or if you get knocked out, I'm whipping your ass. That's all I heard. That we do. We're live here, and it's a uh, it's a Father Day edition of the Opinionated Podcast. Today is Father's Day, so Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Yes, Hope y'all are enjoying y'all day. Happy Father's Hope y'all Day, are, fathers. Yeah, the fathers out there, man. You know, so um, start this. How are we gonna start this Father's Day off? Um, what are some of y'all best memories with y'all uh, with y'all fathers? Anybody have any? Anybody want to go? Come on. You don't have oh, you none, gotta, Dre. You gotta run this shit by me before you fuck. Yeah, you gotta yeah, do that before you just fuck run this shit by you niggas. Yeah, I, but maybe I could have prepared something. I mean, don't get it twisted. I have, I have, I have some memories. Okay, give me a second. <laughs> give me a second. Well, I love, my I dad used to take me and my brother to uh, Six Flags, and you know, theme parks and stuff like that. We always had a good time when we went to the theme parks, especially me and Raheem. I remember we went to uh, I believe it was Hershey oh, Park cool. when um Boys to Men first came down, came out with Motown Philly back again. So when we went to Hershey Park, me and Raheem was singing that song all through the park, you know. What I mean, just having it up. Uh I remember one time we all went to the to the to the um amusement park is me raheem uh maurice and we <laughs> maurice looked at raheem and said you look like your middle name should be like philip or something like that and come to find out that is raheem's middle name raheem's middle name raheem's middle name is not philip yeah i knew him for a long time is his middle name really philip <laughs> that's what he I'm his said cousin i didn't even know that nigga middle name was philip <laughs> That's I remember crazy. that shit. Yeah, but we had good times. I, I know some of the times was cut short. Remember one time my dad tried to take us to Six Flags and the car broke down and we were stuck at the uh, uh, AAA had to pick us up and we had to wait at this uh, car shop like all day. So we didn't get to go to Six Flags. That shit was ass. But, you know, what I mean, just little things that, you know, your your, your dad yeah, brings into your though. life. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> the, the them cookouts at my dad's crib and parties that they used to have all them just were great times you know i i think uh i think i have one i, I got two uh one was from when i was younger i think we went to um i don't remember everything but i do remember to go going to wrestlemania and i remember getting a pair of bret hart glasses like like the ones the the, the yeah, big the, Jones. The, yeah, I, re, I remember getting those. I don't remember what happened, but I do remember doing that. My dad used to be in the wrestling. He used to watch wrestling on Sunday morning, uh, Saturday mornings, and I used to, you know, watch it with him back in the day. This is a long, long time ago when he lived with us. Um, and then more recently, when he came down here, um, came down to Florida for a couple of days, and uh, me and my wife spent some time with him and his wife, and and we had a really good time. We went to the Gator, the Gator, uh, the Gator experience, did the fan boat. We went out to dinner and um, my, my my dad was, you know, he's, he's a very funny guy, you know, very, very, he brings the energy up of people around him. And uh, the guy next to us, he had him laughing and the guy wound up paying for all of our lunches. So, and it was like a hundred and something dollars, maybe more. Like we got a bunch Man. of shit. So we go to pay. <laughs> We go to pay, and the, the waitress was like, "No, the guy he he took care of you." We was like, "Oh shit!" It might have been That's a couple lovely. hundred dollars. So we we had a good time when he came down here. I was I was very delighted, and um, I spoke to him on my birthday. We had a, we had a nice conversation. Um, but he's really bad with his phone. I told him, I said, "Bro, you gotta get it. You gotta get a fucking like. You gotta use your phone. <laughs> like, especially if all right, if hey man, we gotta call each other more. And then I call you because I called him like." 
I called him a couple days and no answer. I'm like, you got to get better with your phone if we going to call each other, dog. Come on. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to get out of some habits, you know what I mean? I'll get some less, huh? The attempt is what counts, though. You're right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so my, what about my, you? My, yeah. my memories is go goes back. It was young. It wasn't as, I don't know, elaborate as y'all's, but I would just remember my dad would get off uh he'd get off every Friday from work, and every Friday from work, he'd take me and my brother Kyle. We would go uh get friendly ice cream. He always take us to friendlies every single Friday. It was like you waited for him to get off of work. He'd be like, soon as he come in the door, he'd be like, just let me take my work booth. So just let me take my boots up, put my sneakers on, and, <laughs> and I'm gonna take y'all to friendlies. You know, we just right, we just ganged them at the door. We knew it was Friday, we knew what it was, that's, so we were just waiting. That's nice. that is very yeah, nice, so, actually. <laughs> yeah, so he's like, just let me take my boots. And I always remember him take sitting on the couch, taking his boots off, put his boots yeah. inside, throw the sneakers on. It's just like it's ingrained in my head. And he would take us to uh friendlies, and me and Kyle would just get the regular, and he always he would get my mom a banana split. With walnuts and he would get um he would get some sherbet ice cream and i remember just always seeing him get the sherbet ice cream that orange you know look like it's orange and all that stuff and one of these times i was like i said pop dad i want to taste it he's like you ain't gonna like it if you eat it if you eat it i'm like no nah, no nah, dad i really you know i really want some let me have some he's like all right you're gonna waste my ice cream i said no i'm not man i ate that shit <laughs> It was the worst decision of my life, but I couldn't spit it out because I didn't want my dad to be like, yo, I wasted his ice cream after he told me multiple times not to ask for it. And I ate it anyway. So I'm he like, yo, man. Have gas in front of y'all, man. He was smart. Yeah. He want to have gas in front of y'all. <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> All right. Hey, is that Sean? Hey, that nigga Sean crazy, yo. That nigga Sean crazy. That was yeah, crazy. So, um, so that and also remember, <laughs> I, I remember my pops um promised uh promised me and my brother the the Reebok pumps. So my brother impatient ass, my dad was like, "Yo, I'm gonna get paid this week. I gotta buy me some more boots for work so I can keep going to work. My my work boots is messed up. But my next check, I'm gonna take y'all to the store and get y'all the Reebok pumps." My brother impatient ass just kept asking him, asking him, asking him. He wound up buying Kyle some old janky ass sneakers because he kept bugging oh, the shit up. Right? <laughs> just to teach this nigga a lesson, just bought the most jankiest shit ever. So I, I was like, I was just cool. Like, I understand my pop said he got to get his boots. So I said, I'll wait. So that following week, he wound up buying me the pumps. <laughs> Kyle had to keep wearing them janky ass sneakers. That's messed up. But he did that to teach, he te you know. What I mean, he went eventually, like a couple weeks later, while the bottom of the pumps, but he wanted to teach my brother a lesson, like, yo, just you know, I gotta, I gotta make sure I can have my boots for work, so I can make the money, so I can come home and provide for y'all. Like, if I can't go to work, I can't do anything for y'all. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that was like a good, you know, it was like a lesson I learned from my pops and shit. He, you know, what I mean, that's what he would do all the time. He do something wild. He would just, um, like I said, he would just, you know, always have a reason behind it. He would never discipline us without no no kind of rhyme or reason. It was always a reason behind everything, man. Yeah. You know I mean, that's, the, that's, that's, that's what you learn from your father. I mean, you learn the structure, learn, learn the structure. You learn what to do or what not to do, honestly. You know, that's, that's really what it is, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, man. I listen. I learned a lot from my pops. I remember that nigga. I, What's one of the most important lessons for your dad? Oh, whew, man, and this is a weird lesson, but it's a, it's a lesson. So can't wait to hear this. Before. He always is like the importance of just you know doing something. Don't bitch about it, but just get it done. Just do it. If got to be done, just do it. So I may have told the story. And my, me and my brother, man, always, always into something. We was younger. It was me, my dad, my mom. We lived in a one bedroom apartment. We all lived, we all shared a one bedroom apartment. You know what I'm saying? It was young and stuff like that. I ain't gonna hold you. They was real young. So the room would get fucked up with me and my brother. We would just go in that room and just tear the room apart every single time, no matter what. So <coughs> our shit be everywhere. So he would always tell us, like, yo, uh, clean the room up. It shouldn't take y'all no longer than an hour. Clean the room, get the shit together. 
So, of course, you give you give two kids an hour to do something, they're not going to do it. So we in there just wilding the fuck out, arguing, still playing, still throwing shit around, still wilding out. And you hear us, and you come back in the room, you be like, yo, man, 20 minutes went by. Get this room cleaned up. Y'all, now y'all got 40 minutes. So we now, now me and this nigga, me and, me and this nigga arguing, me and Kyle arguing back and forth, arguing, arguing, arguing. Not clean nothing up, throwing stuff at each other, getting mad because we, we just got in trouble. He yelled at us. Steady doing that again. Now I come back. He said, look, y'all playing. I hear y'all here still doing y'all dumb shit. I got 20 minutes left. Now we in this bitch rushing, trying to get shit, you know what I mean? Which should have took us an hour, which we need an hour. We in this bitch rushing. Throwing shit underneath the bed, throwing shit in the closet, just not the way he wanted us to clean it up. Come back in that room, we open that door again. <laughs> Y'all got one minute left. Now we fucking crying because we know what's next. And it goes up, he comes in with the belt. Whips both our asses. Whips our asses. And he said, now clean the room. I told y'all to clean it and get it done. And the lesson I learned from that was like, yo, if I just took the hour he gave me and did what I had to do, I'd have saved my, myself an ass whooping and still having to clean this room. So instead of bitching about doing shit, just do it. You, you got to do it regardless. Don't be bitching and moaning about it. Just get it done because you you eventually you have to do it. You got to get around to it. It's going to be some consequences behind not doing what needs to be done. You know what I'm saying? So that's like a lesson I use now as an adult. It's shit I don't want to do as an adult, but I know it has to be done. I just do it. Like You know what I'm saying? I do it, get it done. I can bitch after after it's done and it's completed. It ain't no consequences behind the action. So that's a like a real valuable lesson I learned from my pops and shit, man. And and, and like I said, that's the type of dude he was, man. You know, and I ain't want to fight or not. I ain't want to fight or nothing, huh? We say is it is it is, uh, it is, it is. Uh, so <clears throat> that or I remember you know always being scared of, and, and fighting and he always like niggas used to pick and bully on me and shit when I was younger so he'd be like oh you won't go out there and fight so it was this kid that was older than me in the neighborhood he was picking on me and he was older than me he was bigger than me I knew I had no shot of beating this nigga and he was a foster kid <laughs> so. <laughs> So he been through the system already. So <laughs> they kept picking on me, picking on me, and I ran in the house. I like ran in the house. I didn't want to play because he's. Can I interrupt you? Know I mean? can, I, can I interrupt you? Yeah. Y'all, y'all foster kids or y'all shelter kids were the worst human beings alive when I was a kid. Continue. <laughs> Damn, Dre. I got like jumped. I got jumped by shelter kids, and that's when I told Damn. y'all. My, my homie that was walking with me that they was talking shit to him and I started speaking up for him. I'm getting, I'm in a circle getting jumped. They kicking me, punching me. I see this nigga walking, walking as if nothing's happening and continuing to walk home. But go ahead. <laughs> I, I'm guessing y'all friendship ended Damn. that day. I mean, I was in like a third grade, but I remember that shit like it was yesterday. I'm getting jumped by the shelter kids, the foster kids, all them niggas hung out together. And this nigga, I'm I'm as I'm in the fucking in the middle of this circle getting jumped, I just look over there and this nigga just walking as if nothing's happening. I say, you bitch ass nigga. But anyway, go ahead. You want to get jumped too. Well, you're supposed to go back to back and just start fighting niggas, bro. But he must. He knew them foster kids they ain't have nothing to lose because they lost everything already. So they was coming for that ass. Exactly, exactly. Bro. But go ahead, Kev. That's exactly what this. That's exactly what this situation was. I ran the house because nigga kept picking with me. Shot in the crib. Dad, like, what you doing in the house? So I don't want to play. He said that nigga picking with you again, ain't he? I'm like, nah, Dad. He said, nah. Bring your ass on. <laughs> nah, that nah. <laughs> he snatched me outside. Took me to the street fight this nigga. I said, he gonna beat me up. He said, if you fucking cry or if you get knocked out, I'm whipping your ass. That's all I heard. While I'm fighting this nigga, I'm taking blows from hell. And all I was scared was like, yo, please don't get knocked out. Please don't cry and don't fall. And I'm just, every fucking hit this kid hit me with, which is uh, the most painful shit ever. And every time I'm connected with this nigga, it don't even look 
like it's phasing them. So we just rocking, boom, 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 boom. Next thing I know, I see my aunt, my aunt Kalani come running out the house. Don't have no damn kids fighting. And I'm just steady, like, please hurry up and get here so you can break this shit the fuck up. I'm just praying the whole time that she rush here and get here. Dog, she finally got here, broke us the fuck up. I just went back, just laid there, like laid on the ground, looking up at the sky. Out of you breath, know, my dad picks, picks me up and shit. After that, me and that dude became best friends. My dad said, "That's he said, that's the less you can't run from them. If you fight them, they respect you. I said, God damn, nigga. I, this is a terrible way to learn a lesson. I think, I think, yeah, that I think that's a crazy lesson because most, most lesson. but we're gonna retire. Yeah, that, story. yeah we're gonna retire that story for sure because yeah, you know, that's the last time we're gonna hear that. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, but that's a, that's, a, that's a crazy story because most most I feel like most dads would be like, yo, you get out there and fight. If you if you too scared to fight him, then you are gonna have to fight me. Which person you gonna be more scared of? You know what I mean? Then you want to fight, but the fact. That your dad said, if you get knocked out, I'm knocking you out next. Like, damn, you can't even lose this fight, really, because if you lose this fight, you still got to fight. And that ain't right. That's all I thought. That shit was in the back of my head, like, pumping loud the whole fight. Like, that's what kept me going. That's the only... I'm like, I don't want to get beat by this nigga. I mean, I'd rather get beat by this nigga If you get hit with something... (laughs) If you get hit with something good enough, you can't help but to get knocked out you know what i'm saying like so so if you if you had a missed a dodge or something like that and he caught you some shit i think that you know what i mean you can't win every fight you're not better oh, than no. every person you know what i mean I got so, knocked out. I got so knocked if you out lose the fight <laughs> then you still gotta go home and fight afterwards when you wake up <laughs> no, i think no, i think that's i think that's a, a lesson that every kid should have to to learn because you got to understand, yo, them niggas out there really ain't going like facing your problems head on is not going to hurt you like you think it is. Because that's really all that. Like, if you look at that lesson, like I, we've heard that story a bunch of times, but let's let's really dive into it, because I think it was really important and it was really a valuable, valuable lesson that your dad taught you. And I feel like we all would teach. I don't have any kids, but. Like even my nephews or, you know, y'all kids, we would all do the same thing now. Like, no, no, not we going to beat their ass if they lose. But other than that, it's like, no, no, no. Here, come on. Go fight that person that was saying that they was going to whip your ass. Don't be scared of that person. That person really ain't going to do nothing to you. That's something that you deal with in life, facing your problems head on. Hey, those bills that you got to pay, those things that you got to do, all that shit you got to face head on. Your boss is going to have a problem with you sometimes. You don't run from your boss or you don't want to run from somebody. You go face that shit and talk to them straight up because most of the time mm-hmm. it ain't as big as what you put in your it ain't as big as what you thought it was in your mind. So yeah. go face that problem. That's all your dad was doing. And that was probably one of the most important lessons that you ever. That's why you refer back to it so much, because it was one of the most important lessons that you learned in your life. Uh, it's just something that's like sure. ingrained in my head. It's ingrained in my head to this day yeah. what he taught me because it's like ain't like I'm like saying fighting or fearing anybody. I don't fear nothing. It's like it is what it is. Like I got a problem or issue with anybody. It's like let's have this conversation, bro. I can't dan- I can't dance around it. I can't, you know what I mean? I can't keep running from it and shit like that. Like I gotta face it. Like, you know, worst I can hear is no or you know, I mean, the worst thing, not anymore, but I'm 40, but younger. It's like, yo, I get into a fight. Like, it's just going to be a scuffle. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? No, but no, I'm 40. Yeah, you 40. Yeah, yeah whatever. Well, I'm 41. I'm 41 and shit. It's, it's only me and Kev are 40, and he's only 40 for maybe a, like a week. You know what? I'm going to hold on to every day, every hour. That's what I did. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, get mad the... when I'll be like, nah, nigga, you 40. Oh, I ain't 41. 41. Yeah. <laughs> nigga, don't put, don't put that time on me yet. <laughs> yeah, what's, I, let me ask y'all this question. What's the worst thing y'all ever did? And y'all knew y'all dad was coming home to punish y'all. And I mean, it was your ass. Of fire you just fit. What? Yeah, but it wasn't me, though. <sighs> what was you thinking? It was an arsonist. I probably told this. I told this story once on this podcast. Um, no, nah, I wasn't. A, it, my dumbass friend, just stupid, stupid, stupid ass. I grew up around some stupid ass people, man. Just why I always attract dumbass niggas? Other than y'all, 
Y'all, y'all are, y'all are regular. <laughs> dumb, but in, in school, dumbass niggas. Fucking cutting school in fifth grade. Cutting school. We was dumb in school. Me and Kev did a lot of reckless shit. Yeah, but I ain't know y'all. <laughs> Yeah, but if you was attracted to us, you would it would have been no different than the niggas you knew back then. <laughs> Except we ain't setting fires in school like idiots. Dog, stupid nigga. We in the we in school, right? Mm-hmm. But we cutting. We cutting, but we in school. They that had a fire. No sense. I know. But we we didn't go. I don't know why I didn't think I would get caught, but me just following along with this dumbass nigga. So there was these fire escapes that niggas were chilling. So, you know, the teachers wouldn't come down that shit. So we were chilling the fire escapes or whatever. So mm-hmm. this nigga got matches. Throw the match in the fucking trash can. The trash can got nothing but paper towels and shit in it. Damn. Shit catch on fire. <laughs> shit catch on fire. <laughs> Our dumb ass is like, all right, well, we ain't got, you know, pee in it <laughs> to, 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 to put it out. <laughs> Regardless of what happens, the fire, I know, the fire alarms go off and all that shit start. We get called into the office. They want us to snitch on each other. I don't snitch. He don't snitch. But we both was in there. You know what I'm saying? This is before cameras and all that shit. So they send, send me home or whatever. Or somebody had to come get me from school. I think it was my dad. But he played a trick on me. Or at least I thought it was a trick. He 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 ain't beat my ass when I got home. Nah. I thought it, I thought it was going down as soon as I got home. Nope, he didn't. I thought I was safe. I was not. I went to sleep and everything. You know how you think sleep will save you? It it didn't. <laughs> I got my ass whipped, but I was I already had my clothes off and all that shit because I was asleep. Wrong decision. It was like an hour or two later. I don't know what that nigga was on. I guess he didn't feel like doing that shit when he got home. Normally, I would tell that story way more in detail, but I don't really remember it like that because I'm 40. I remember. Uh, <laughs> okay. I, uh, I, uh, I, you I must... had a similar situation, not kept, catch nothing on fire in school, but cutting school. And I cut school. It was it was a few of us. And uh, we went. We were about to get ready to go to Baba's. We all know where Baba's is at. And we were going to walk to Baba's and y'all know how Blade was back in the day. My dog Blade, this motherfucker breaks out of the house as we're trying to get out and chases the mailman down the street and catches him (laughs) and catches this motherfucker. So you remember how our mailboxes was in the middle of Dre, how it was like a big ass box. You had to put you, you had your own slot, but the Mm -hmm. joint was kind of tall, right? This this mailman was climbing that jaw yeah. while Blade was grabbing him. So needless to say, uh, when we ended up, I got Blade back in the house. We ended up walking back to, we ended up walking to Baba's and we get picked up uh, by the police. Sure and thing. yeah, and they take us, they take us back to school. You know what I mean? For truancy. So I had to go to school, right? And then um, I didn't get I didn't get on the bus. I got packed in. I got picked. I got picked up by my grandfather from school, and then he brought me home. And I had to wait there until my dad got home. And I knew, I knew he was coming to fuck me up. I knew it. There was no. There's nothing to even talk about. You know what I mean? The mailman just got fucked up. I'm not in school. What the fuck are you doing? You know what I mean? So needless to say, when I was younger, I didn't really get to see a lot of daylight because I did a lot of dumb shit as a kid. I was always on punishment for something, you know what I mean? So so that day was definitely crazy. There's a couple oh, times we, we got caught up. Y'all been so, there. Y'all been there when when uh oh yeah. <laughs> oh, my aunt, my aunt this came. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, we were drinking that. I'm not saying that time. <laughs> we were joking <laughs> at my crib, and then we had we was all chilling at my crib that one time. Me, you, and Dre, and my dad knew that we were going out with with Chanda and Nelly and them oh, at yeah. the time, going out to hang out, and we were supposed to be getting ready to go. 
And then my aunt came. <laughs> Dre, you was hiding in the damn closet. You making faces like that. Why you hiding? I'm like, I don't you know. Why you hiding, Dre? He in the closet looking like an idiot. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm telling I'm you, Dad. Like, I said, yo, why did we do this dumb shit, yo? Yo, your pop, that, he wasn't, yo yeah, he was on vacation or some shit like yeah. that. I remember I, that. Of course we're going to Yeah, but he knew. What, what, what he, knew, like, he knew I, we were going out to the movies exactly. with Chanda and him that night. We just happened to be like nah, taking our time. With it. Yeah, you know, we just happened to be doing take something. Time. Y'all was doing something else. I, I came in that and that bust that shit wide open. Like, yo, y'all niggas, you know what I mean? Yo, yo I ever tell y'all, I told y'all, y'all two niggas I had something I t- to do. Yeah, I, yeah, we did. I think I told I, y'all I, that. <laughs> I told y'all the rabbit story. Find another one. Find find some you never I'm told. That there ain't no stories that he never about heard. Irish, about the, the Dick ice cream Tracy story, story was the first time we ever heard that. <laughs> the Dick Tracy yes. story? I don't know. Find it. another one. Go ahead. You never heard that one? I don't even know what that is. Well, there's a Dick Tracy magazine on the... My mom was cleaning the crib, right? So I was like... Not, Sammy wasn't even born yet. So I'm like seven, seven or eight. So it was a Dick Tracy. Dick Tracy had just came out in the movie theaters. <laughs> So my mom had the like the magazine there. So I'm seeing this shit. I'm like, oh snap, Dick Tracy. My mom steady cleaning the house. She ain't say nothing to me. So I'm like, real, I get louder. Dick Tracy. He still don't say nothing. So I'm like, Dick Tracy. Why you was doing that? Just so I can say Dick is a cuss word. <laughs> I'll pick, pick the weird one to fucking accentuate. Oh, <laughs> the other one's just there. Dick, dick. I'm like, they gonna put dick on. They gonna put dick on the front cover. I'm like, dick. Tracy. She said, "Are you cussing?" I said, "Nah." I'm reading the comic book. It says Dick Tracy. She said, like, "Boy, I just heard you say it three times. The first two I let slide, and the third one, I said, but it says Dick Tracy." She said, you know what? Fuck it. She ain't say nothing. She said, take your ass in the fucking room. And when your dad come home, you read the same magazine to see what happens. <laughs> nigga. Sitting in that room for five hours waiting for this nigga to get off of work was like, like, like sitting in the jail cell. I'm just sitting there like, yo, I'm getting fucked up. So I hear the fucking the front door open and close. I'm like, oh. heart racing. I hear my mom, my dad out there ha- having a conversation about the shit. Like, I'm ear hustling to the door, just like, yo. Then I hear that nigga say, he said, what? Like, real loud. He said, what? I said, it's a rat. This nigga <laughs> came in there. <laughs> he came in there. He ain't even coming there with a belt. He came in there with a, you remember the weight belts, like the joint you put around and you lift the weight? <laughs> The big weight belts. I know nigga, what you're talking can't. about. I don't nigga. know how you could beat a child with a weight belt. Nigga, I'm he really came in that shit like a baseball he bat. He came in there with the fucking weight belt. And he said, you was out there cussing. He said, your mom said you were cussing. I said, nah, dad, I was just reading the magazine. He said, what the magazine say? I said, it said D. I said, it said D Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch ass nigga. <laughs> He was like, huh? Go ahead and say what it said. I, I said, it said Dick Tracy, but I was just reading it. He said, nah, your mom said you said it three times. She tried to let you ride the first two, and then you're going to get loud and just say the one word by itself. I said, nah. So that what I tell you about fucking lying to me. Dog, when he hit me with the weight belt, weight belts don't sting. The shit just because I'm so small when he hit me with this shit, it just knocked me the fuck around the room. It just hit me. It just threw my low ass. Stood me back up. Came with it from the other side. Boom! The shit it just hurt. Not from getting stung, but just getting knocked the fuck around the room with this big ass. If anybody knows anything about a weight belt, they just these thick, heavy motherfucking belts, dog. And I'm still trying to comprehend how he yeah. beat you with that shit. That guy yeah, yeah, yeah. had that shit with two hands, which just, just made me stand up and just take the impact. I would just slide. 
Kev celebrating Father's nice Day by talking about all the child abuse Trauma. needs he's gone through. <laughs> I remember when I remember all the good times when my dad used to whoop my ass, hit me with weight belts and shit, throw weights at me. Like he used to do some wild shit with us. Like he used to. Uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, your pop is, has always been cool, and yeah. and but to uh, but. I've never seen that side of Uncle Kev because I've never been the person to be around and acting up and, and and you know I act up around my own family. I ain't acting up around somebody else's family. That's the one thing that my father told me. Hey yo, when we go someplace, you better act like you got some sense because that ass whooping turns into a different type of ass whooping when you embarrass them. You know what I'm saying? Like you do some shit at home and they catch you doing some shit. It's like all right, you're getting a teaching moment. But when you do some shit around somebody else, like in a grocery store or at somebody else's oh. event or something like that, nah, nigga, this ass whooping is different. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? This this ass whoop is teaching you a lesson, and and there's some uh there's some there's some anger that's brought along with that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Disrespect. Mm-hmm. I think that's all my worst is. ass whoopings came from my pops. Is when my mom said, "Wait till your dad get home." I think just the fear. Of knowing this nigga's coming home and it's about to be a rap, but it, I had fun. It was a lot of fun everybody. times. I had fun times. I had my pop. I remember my pops end up. My dad was a big NW NWA fan, and this was like '89. These niggas came out, so he had just bought the tape and shit. He in the room with me and my brother Kyle got the shit bumping in the crib playing NWA. <laughs> me and my brother jump. He let me and my brother jump on the bed, and what he was doing was taking the pillows when we had jumped. And like throw the pillow at our legs and knock us out the air. We <laughs> land on the bed, and it was just the funny <laughs> fucking thing ever to us. <laughs> Yo, I'll be crying laughing if I was doing it to kids. Huh? Yeah, definitely, I would cry laughing every time I would get one of y'all. I would cry laughing. He had the right idea. Oh, so he just let. Yeah, that was a. It was just fun. He would just let us just jump. Listen to NWA. He just hitting us with the pillows. So he was like, "Y'all want to do something fun?" I said, "Yeah, yeah." So he said, "Get in the sheet." He did. The sh- he got the sheet and he balled the sheet up and he took the sheet. And me and Kyle the sheet and swung it and swung it and threw Meanwhile, the sheet on Kevin's the bed. Meanwhile, Kevin's only six years old. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, we landed on the bed. I think my head hit Kyle's mouth. We about to start crying. He like, "Shh, shh, shh. No, no, mom won't come here. Stop crying. She's gonna make it stop." <laughs> only men can get away with that. Only she men gonna can make us stop having fun. <laughs> yeah. Only men can get away with kids, like because that's how they play. Y'all play wrestle, you do all that. The mom don't understand that. She don't understand that that's how like kids. That's how men play with boys. Like we play rough. Yeah. We play rough, and it's and it's fucking hilarious. It was a funny. It's fucking thing. hilarious. It was the funniest thing ever. Like it was just a fun ass day. That she came in there. She's like, eventually she that shit just that NWA tape just kept getting worse and worse. She came in. You got these goddamn kids listening to this cussing ass music. He like, he like, they all right. You hear, you hear what like, you said, right? You hear yeah. what she said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he got these kids listening to this goddamn cussing ass music. Like, she ain't cussing, but he ain't care, man. Like, I remember he like he was he was big into that NWA and Ice T and shit, Ice T, all that. So I don't know, was it music, music video box or whatever? MTV didn't come on back then, and. The the box so our ice t video had came on ice t i did an interview and he said he's gonna be back on again the next day i just i couldn't wait for my dad to come home I'm like dad 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 ice t was on tv your, your rapper he gonna be on here tonight he, my dad dead tired i'm like dad you just gotta stay up you gotta stay up you gotta stay up you're gonna be on here my dad just sat up there with me tired as shit and ice t came on i was so happy that he got to see ice t he look at I can see he tired in his face, but he's not like trying to. He's probably dead tired because I know how he feel now. Being the dad now is like, yo, the kids ask you to do something. Like whatever, how tired you are, you just do it. He just sat up until Ice T came on. I'm like, yo, I was just so happy that he got to see it. I'm like, yeah, hey, I told you that I was going. I told you Ice T was going to come on here. It was just like, I'm like, damn, he just not having no consideration then, but now looking back, like, damn, he just. He got just got off of work. It's dark as shit. He probably won't get in the shower and go to bed. And hear my little ass just want him to stay up and watch TV, That's which he did. Part of being a dad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, being man. dad. Y'all think Father's Day is underrated? Yeah, it's underrated. Under, I, I'm underrated and underappreciated. 
Yeah. I tell me I why. hate it. Because I just hate it now. It's, it's like they try to make Father's Day as some like you know, they always want to lump all the bad fathers in with the good fathers and always want to like knock our holiday and shit because some chick out there made a bad decision and letting some dumbass nigga nut in her. And now all fathers got to fucking pay for it. And every father ain't the same and shit. You know what I'm saying? It's just, so we get lumped in there with them. Then you got women out there. Oh, happy father's day to me, bitch. Like I, I could say happy mother's day to me, but I don't, I'm a single, I was a single parent father. That's your motherfucker holiday. Go ahead. We all got dads. Just like we all got moms. Just because the nigga you fuck is a piece of shit don't mean the next nigga out there is a piece of shit. So it, it don't even get advertised. It's like, yeah, if it happens, it happens. Shit, half the time, these men, I'm a father. I don't even know what Father's Day is. I got to look that shit up. And I'm a dad. That's in my kid's life. Like, Which, Father's what, Day. What are your presents that you get on Father's Day? What are the, what are, And what do you want to get? So what are the presents that you get and what do, what do y'all want to get? I'm not a dad. I can't I can't really, you know what I mean? I was asking y'all. I don't like for mine. presents. I mean, my kids will give me Should stuff, you? You know, like, uh, you know, my youngest will make stuff for me, which I find to be That's awesome. Nice. I get to put on a refrigerator, things like that. My oldest used to make stuff for me and now she buys stuff, but she buys me little cool things. You know what I mean? She's starting to get better with her gifts, but I don't really expect them to give me anything. You know what I mean? I, I just I want to I I want to be there for my kids. Period. So I that nigga a dime bag. <laughs> yeah. Got you some. Yeah. <laughs> look, it'd be funny. She oh my god! Bag with, a, with an actual dime in it. Dang, look, I got you a dime bag. <laughs> You'd be like, <laughs> that's probably the cutest thing in the world. Then I'd be yeah, like, yo, the thing in the world. Uh, what terrible? Did your mother allow this? Because we need to have a Her conversation. Idea. Yeah, we would have to have a conversation. What the fuck is wrong with you? Well, so, what, what was your best present? Tell me, what was your best present that you ever got as a father? Uh, I, might uh, have have best I might you. have it. No, I, I might have. Let me show you. Let's jump off screen. Y'all talk. No, my. My, <laughs> my oldest gets me like she give me like shirts uh charms for my keys and stuff like that just little shit like best father in the world sometimes she writes like letters which i find to be awesome um stuff that actually takes her takes her time to do her own personal time to do it is probably my most favorite items because she actually has to use her own. She's using her time. She's using her talent. You know what I mean? I feel like she's doing it from the heart. It's easy to just buy something nowadays. You know, maybe not for my kids. It's hard as hell to pick stuff up for my kids. But to just buy a gift in general, it just, all you need is cash. And, yeah, I want this. Boom. Transaction. It's over. But for her to actually have to make stuff, it actually takes time and effort that she has to put in to complete this item. So right. those are normally my favorite ones. So okay. here's my favorite, John, right here. This is from my son, Kevin. It's about 10 years old. <laughs> it's, it's just a dad folder with a picture on them. And I got another one from Tavon and KK when they was younger. You know, Globe, I got... My Father's Day stuff I always keep yeah. my kids. Stuff that they actually yeah. make. Yeah. It's, it's the best gift I can ever receive on Father's Day. This is from, you know, Kyrie and stuff. Like, I keep I keep all this stuff. I still got stuff that my kids made me, Kier made me in, like, the second grade for Father's Day. Because at the end of the school year, you know, Father's Day school is out. So they make stuff at the last day of school and they give it to you. So I just keep all That's this. Nice. It, means, it means the world to me, that shit. Like, like Kev said, it is, it's not what you buy. It's just the fact that you you made, you cared enough to make this for your dad. So it means a lot to me. So I'm going to make sure I never throw it away or lose it. I'm going to hold on to it because y'all made it for me. So. I think that's, that's, that's beautiful. I also think they should move Father's Day to another month. <laughs> I'm no, not joking. It's... I think it should be earlier in the year. I think it should have some separation from Mother's Day because that's part of that's part of it. 
to yeah. me personally why it's underrated because it's like all right mother's day then it's all right oh shit father's day coming up too oh oh now i gotta scramble or you could just have it to be another time of the year where it's like oh this is father's day boom this is for fathers and then that one is for mothers yeah boom. i mean it's cool I don't care. Like Father's Day for me, best Father's Day is hey yo, y'all let dad just chill, play the game. <laughs> just let me wake up and chill all day. Here goes some breakfast money for you. Hey, my wife made me breakfast this morning. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you y'all grilling, take my you grilling on Father's Day? You grilling on Father's nah, Day? I'm not grilling this Father's Day. She taking me to the movies and she taking me to a movie. She she want to go. She want to go see Bad Boys too. So she taking me to the movies to see Bad that's Boys too. It's definitely Bad Boy <laughs> Six. Six, whatever. I don't know. It's, just, so I don't, I don't it's not six. It's not six. I, it's not six. I, just, said, I just said two just to say two. Like, God damn it. Bad, <laughs> bad so boy many. seven, the baddest <laughs> boys. The baddest <laughs> boys. The baddest. You know what I'm saying? Like, they all old Martin all fucked up in the face. I don't know what's up with him. I've, I've seen it. And uh, yeah. I've seen it. It is very good. Um, The one thing I can tell is Martin is a he's I know there's like, oh, don't worry about Martin. No, he's different. Yeah, yeah. Martin's he's, he's different. You can see yeah. it, but you can see it even in the movie. He's different. Yeah. And you're like, hmm. yeah, I know so. he's getting older. Maybe he needs to really watch out for his health because he, you can see it. It's He's different. Yeah. But it yeah, is a very gone. good movie. Go and see that. She's going to take me out. She, wanna, she wants some Don to kill her. You. You you might, listen to everything I'm saying. Let's listen carefully. She no. wants to go see Bad Boys. I'm scared. So we're going to see Bad Boys. <laughs> She uh yeah. she wants to go down to kill her. So we going to down to kill her. Yeah, I mean, doing everything she want to do. That means you just have a stress free. You get to have a stress free day if you do everything she wants to do. Yeah, that's, that's, that's your present. That, but that's but that's what father. I think that's what Father's Day like because I think at, we as fathers and fathers in general is like yo. Everything we do is ninety nine percent of the time is not for us. It's for everybody else. Like. Our time that we give, we, we give it for y'all. Our energy, things we do is for y'all. Mothers, too. I can't say they don't, but fathers is like, yo, everything we do is for y'all. Y'all happy, I'm happy. Y'all good, y'all good. You know what I'm saying? You can't you can't say on Mother's Day, hey, uh, yeah, I'm going to go to this basketball game they about to have. Let's do that for Mother's Day. It's like, nah, you got to do something she want to do. You know what I'm saying? But on Father's Day, they can get that off with us. It's like, all right, that's what y'all want to do. Cool. You, Let, let's you do want that your shit. Day to go smooth. You want your day yeah. to go smooth. You do what she yeah. wants. But you see, listen, that's why I said change the date of Father's Day because there's more shit to do that a father will want to do. Think about it. Are you going to a playoff game right now or or the fucking championship game right now? Yeah, I'm not no. Trying to afford that are you going? To, are you going to a football game right now? No. Oh yeah. Are you going to all the shit that a dad would want to do? Like, nah. It's like it's the start of the summer, which is great. So the only thing to do is barbecue. But if you push it to earlier in the year, you might be able to go to a basketball game. You might, and and then they do a whole thing where they'll celebrate the Father's Day at the basketball game. Like you could do other shit, but where they put it at, it's like, I guess I'll barbecue. I mean, I, mean, I don't mind grilling. I ain't grilling this year, but. I don't believe you. I, I ain't. I you gonna ain't be all, You gonna be sleeping grilling. You gonna put the grill in, at your bedside. No, nah, I ain't grilling this year. I like real shit. That's I'm just true. chilling. Like I just you get a baseball game. I'm, yeah, baseball game. But I'm on some chill shit right now. I just you know chill. She gonna take me out and everything. Somebody else barbecuing, so I might just come back and slide through there and just see say what's up to everybody. But I ain't grilling today, man. It just you know. Like you saying about moving Father's Day and shit. I, uh, like I said, the one thing I really hate is the bitter moms out there that just try to shit on Father's Day. Like, like no, nope. <clears throat> do y'all choose? Yeah, back dude, y'all them. I am because I get tired <laughs> of seeing it every fucking year. I really do. It's, it's our fucking day. I'm an actual good father. I get tired of seeing the shit every fucking year. Like this is a. Uh, like y'all day to fucking take y'all bitterness out on the the fucking poor decision you made for your baby dad. I ain't tell you to fuck the nigga. If you seen the nigga not have a job and you was picking this nigga up and you was paying for most of the shit and you was providing clothes and everything for him and then you keep letting this nigga nutting you 
And now y'all got a baby, and now you're thinking that this baby's going to change him and make him grow the fuck up and be a responsible dad, and he still doesn't do it? Who you got to blame but yourself? Like, you chose the fuck up. You stuck with the fuck up. The fuck up nutted in you. Now all dads on Father Day got to suffer. Like, I'm pretty sure you got a dad. You telling your dad fuck him too? Like, what the fuck? Like, this is our day. Y'all, they and need that's a probably bit- where the bitterness comes in is all around her. You know what I mean? Well, they need a bitter baby mom day. Fucking put that shit out a couple weeks from now. Y'all can just go the fuck off. Like I don't want to see that shit neither. I, I don't care. I don't want to see it now. Like, yo, at some I point, it's, it's it's less because I niggas is calling them, Yeah, because niggas is calling them out on that shit. Like, bitch, shut the fuck up. Like, shut I- the fuck up. I think Let everybody it. about it is a woman who is uh, uh, if a man sees a woman who's bitter towards her baby dad he more than likely is not going to want to be with her it's harder it's going to be harder for her to even get into a relationship again when she decides she's ready to be in a relationship because once he sees all that goofy shit you can't help to put yourself in somebody else's shoes regardless you know what i mean because you don't know what happened in that household then the only thing you could think about is, man, I don't want to go through that shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That. I don't want to know what it's like. I don't want to go. I don't want to be with her while she's like that with him. Because now I got to deal with both of these motherfuckers. I, I, I think anybody who goes out of their way to sh- publicly shit on their um, baby's father or baby mother on... um on social media, on their, on like a Mother's Day or Father's Day. I think there's automatically some other shit going on. Cause like, listen, I know that maybe you guys haven't seen eye to eye with your, you know, with, you know, any baby's moms or whatever, but you never on Mother's Day said, man, fuck the baby. Like you don't do that. Like you get what I'm saying? Because you didn't separate from them. Like, like it's not, that's what I'm saying. Like there's automatically something there. You know what I mean? It's, For it to be a little bit more complicated. It's misery. Like, if you truly moved yeah. on with somebody, you just, you're not worried about them no more. You're not worried about what they do, what they're doing. You don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? It don't concern you whether it, what's going on in their life. As long as they're not in yours. So you, you can care less what they're doing. So you just move the fuck on. Now, that doesn't, that doesn't, now I don't have kids, but that doesn't mean that if you be busting your ass and, and killing yourself for your kids and you know that the other motherfucker ain't doing shit that you ain't mad because <laughs> I'll be mad yeah. shit. but you still do what you got to do because it's, it's a part of the job. But y'all, you niggas, y'all, like, man, y'all, niggas, <laughs> y'all niggas know my situation. I, mm-hmm. and like I said, I don't give a fuck. I don't. I just don't. But there ain't going to be no empathy or sympathy from me towards that person. I don't fucking tell. Stay there. I stay here. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Do you? I do me. Don't mention my name. I don't mention yours. That's how we gonna keep it. Ain't no. It ain't no fucking. Ain't no. No niceness between us. It's all. It's all fucked up shit. And I'm. I'm capable of just like living my life day to day without you being in it. I can. I be cool. You mention me, then I'm gonna fucking flip on you because I got some shit to say to you. But for the most part, I move on. But I. I don't know. I just think you know. Uh, you know, I, I love Father's Day. I appreciate, you know what I'm saying, all this. Listen, That's- man, listen. I wasn't raised in the house with my father, but he was around, you know what I'm saying? So I hate that st- whole stigmatism of, oh, you know, black kids don't have father shit. It's like, now nah, we got pops just because they, my mom, my dad wasn't together. Like, nigga was still there. Like, let's be real. There's some niggas who never even, don't even know what their dad look like. That's facts. But in the same notion, there's some kids out there who don't even know what their mothers look like. So let's be real. Yeah, it, and, goes, it goes both ways. So uh, yeah, listen, I, man. Let, let, let me let, let me give a a better idea for what how we can make Father's Day better for fathers. All right, let's 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 all give some ideas. Gym free for 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 Father's Day, right? You can come in and work out at any gym. Free gym day. Well, what kind of ideas y'all got that can make Father's Day better? Um, you know, fifty percent off 
But, you know, off of sweatpants, Nike sweatpants for the day for Father's Day. Hey, listen. I like that. I actually like that. <laughs> Come on yeah. now. I shop <laughs> every Father's Day. <laughs> yeah, I'll be at every, Father's Day. You saving up for Nike Day. I'm <laughs> yeah. yeah, Nike Tech boy. What? <laughs> Nike Day for Father's. Yeah. Listen, all us, especially all us dudes is really over the age of 35, a uh, uh, fly ass Nike tech suit, or even the young guys with just something fly from Nike from the day, just a 50% off for fathers that day and shit, just for Father's Day. It's cool. Like that, that that's something nice. I was gonna say I something mean, corny, like some strip club shit, but I ain't uh, trying to go down that lane. You should have a Father's Day parade. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. A real Father's Day parade that, the that, that you make there. the rest of your family have to go to. Hell yeah, yeah. you Fuck make that. them go to, and, and and it's a bunch of fathers in the area celebrating each other. You know what I mean? You walk around; it, it could like be that. on the strip somewhere. They got bars there. You step in there. Fathers get their first drink free. You know what I mean? I'm trying to tell you, make it an actual let's celebration. Yeah, let's be innovative. You know what I mean? Think or, about like think that. about that shit. You actually go to a parade where where Guys are celebrating each other for being fathers, good fathers. The families are there. Like Everybody's in a good mood. You looking at the next man and you like, yo, happy Father's Day. You don't know this man. Right. Happy yeah. Father's Day. But everybody walking around celebrating each other. You walking like into that. food places, they giving you a free meal for the fathers, free drink for the fathers. You, you know what I'm saying? Everybody coming out, having a good time. DJ bumping all Father's Day type music. You know what I mean? Remixing that shit, I'll always nah, love my that. papa. <laughs> <laughs> He's my you know favorite he... man. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nah, I, I like that idea. I like those ideas. Either that or, you know, uh, you know, football preseason is starting up, you know. Fathers get uh, access to. Nowhere near uh, now, though. Yeah, the, nowhere The, the mini now. camps or something. No, it's mini camps. That's, it's mini camps now, that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, 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 fathers no, get asked to watch mini camp. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Every every dad will go just it's mini camp. It, you were just happy to see football. They don't even gotta be gotcha. playing, just watching the practice and shit like that, and like yeah. getting to Come see with players. Your kids so you can show proof that you're a dad. <laughs> yeah. Pick up yeah. the kids, show them at the door, walk right in. <laughs> Leave your kid at the door. <laughs> that's man, all. So that's it, man. Something like that. You know, I just just something for us, man. Like we, I don't think fathers or men in general, we ain't complicated creatures. We don't. If even it's times, your chick might say, "Forget to mention Father's Day to you or get you anything." He was like, uh, well, "She left me alone all day." So. <laughs> what do you do? I was like, "All right, what the fuck you want me to say?" It's you know, hey. Now if you saying Father's Day to other the you. Yeah, you say Father's Day to everybody else, and, and here it is, 5 o'clock, and you ain't say Father's Day to me yet? Bitch, don't speak to me the rest of this day. You keep it pushing like you've been kept it pushing all morning long. Like I ain't a goddamn dad. I had that shit happen to me one time, bitches. Happy Father's Day to every other nigga she's seen but me. I said, oh. Damn. What? Yeah. That doesn't make sense. That's some passive-aggressive shit. That don't make sense. I just left I just left the crib. I ain't come back to later on that evening. I said, fuck it. You don't know. You don't acknowledge me. I won't be here. Fuck it. I don't give a fuck. I'll go enjoy Father's Day with somebody else. It ain't got to be with your monkey ass. That's, Father's, that's, Day, that's Father's Day at the strip club is probably crazy. Yeah, Father's <laughs> Day at the strip club. You know what I'm saying? Hey, lap, man, first lap it. dance free. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right, crazy. All, all the fathers out here, stress free, free day. We got some of the best talent out here today. We pulled some of the best talent all out of, out of the state to be here for you fathers. You Scout. Know? Father's Day is crazy. All the Father's women came here with, are without fathers, so. <laughs> hey, yo. So you can be their dad. Hey, yo. Hey, nah. yo. <laughs> yo, so we, we about to wrap this shit up, man. So uh, I'm wrapping this shit up, man. Let's <laughs> message. You know, we live, so message to your father on Father's Day. Anybody want to go? You know what I'm saying? We're not live, but it's okay. Oh, you ended the stream? No. We are live. Y'all don't y'all don't know. Y'all don't know how to uh nah. okay, we're live. You don't well, have to I be get, quiet. I get what you're saying. You can well we edit that part out. You got a message day for your fathers. 
Nigga, shut up. This is this is what this is the beauty. I, I said nothing. Go ahead. <laughs> I said nothing. Dre, Dre hates Dre hates when you give behind the scene action. This is a fucking podcast. This ain't a fucking radio. Oh, here we this go. This ain't a radio station. This ain't a TV <laughs> show. Everybody fucks up on podcast. I see the major people do it all the time. Oh you know God. what they do? I they say know. let's cut. They say we're going to cut this. They literally say it on the podcast. We're going to cut this part out. We're going to come back. That's proof that they didn't cut that part out. Yeah, it is. I've seen that happen before. <laughs> it's notoriously right. on drink champs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's one of them. I got a good um, piss real quick. Poppy, let me uh, I'm going to edit this shit out. We'll come right back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But a message to your father. Yeah, go ahead, Dre. No, nah, nah, you know, I love my dad. And I'll, I'll I'll call him and uh, let him know. Hey, happy Father's Day! And there you go. Is that bad? That was fucking terrible. <laughs> <laughs> hey, pops, listen, man. Shout out to my pops, man. Thank you for uh, always being there, man. Being there for the kids, man. Being there for me, um, teaching me a lot of life lessons. Being on my ass all the time. The many times me and you just sat and just had conversations. I would just come, I remember just coming to your house in the middle of the night, stressed the fuck out, and you would just sit there and talk to me for hours. Just, you know what I mean, help me through some shit I was going through in my younger ages, you know what I mean, when I was in my 20s and stuff like that. And I was still trying to figure out how to be a man and um, appreciate the conversation. When I first became a father, with my daughter, I was 19. I was just out of high school and you sat me down and I never forget these words. You say, look, son, I am disappointed at you, disappointing you. I wish, you know, you would have waited and enjoyed your life a little bit more, but you know, you're a man now. So things is going to be rough for you out there as a man and being a dad, but I'm always going to be here for you. I may not be able to help you out financially, but any questions or any answers you need on figuring this thing out, how to be a father. I'm always going to be here for you. My phone will always be on. My door will always be open. Son, you know, I know you got this. You know, you know, but let's do it and I'm here to help you. I just never forgot that shit. So I appreciate that right there for my pops. Um, <clears throat> I want to give a shout out to my pops, a.k.a. Big Kev. First of all, I love you, dog. You know, um, you've taught me a lot throughout the years. Um, and you were always the one to stand up and, you know, be a figure to show me what a man should be, what a man does, you know. And even to this day, with my kids, you are a wonderful grandfather. You're there for everything. If you can't be there, it's a really really good reason and it's more than likely that you're just not around work or whatever the case may be but for every event for any of your grandchildren you are there and we deeply appreciate you we love you and this is definitely a day for you so shout out to you big dog definitely shouldn't have went first uh <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> for that, hey you man, know I we were, didn't know we were doing family matters <laughs> moments, but um, yeah, all that shit. What Kev said. It's all not a family shit. matter moment, dog. It's like real shit. This is why fathers don't get appreciated. It's like I understand. Listen, real. I know he's going to end. I'm. I know, but it just it just hit me, man. Like I get it, man. Like. My mom, and my father broke up. They split, and like I was like eight or nine years old. They split, and it was some days he would come. Some days I wouldn't see him, but on some real shit, I know he was there. And I think that's the that's the hard part we have, you know, expressing to our fathers is like, yo, you were supposed to be around twenty four seven and shit. You know what I'm saying? But shit happened. And, and that's why Father's Day sometimes get kicked in the pants because it's like at a younger age, sometimes we do hold grudges against our father from not being there as much as we want them to be if they're not with our mother or fathers who are in the household 
But them niggas is always working. But they don't understand these dudes is working the way they working because they trying to provide for y'all. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I'd rather be home. I told my bosses just the other day, I said, I fucking hate this job. I said, I don't hate the people. I don't hate y'all. I said, but y'all take me away from my family. I'm here more than I'm home. I'd rather be home with them. And there's a lot of fathers out there is doing the same thing because there's a lot of women out there that, you know, the man let them take care of home and they home all day with them kids 24 seven. But this man is out there busting his ass every single day to make sure straight for us, you know, his kids. So it's hard for us, especially as men. I think we all went through a beefing period with our dads where we beef with these niggas. We mm -hmm. can't even say we haven't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all beef with them. I don't, I don't hold. Uh, I don't hold no no type of uh, issue. Like as far as that goes, like not being there. I got, you get over that shit once you become an adult. You should. Whatever issues you got, you should work through them because you're gonna hold that shit with you for the rest of your life. But as far as them not being there as much as you wanted them to be, you 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 got to get over it. If that's if that's your issue. Um, I've had that conversation recently, you know, with a family member. And I was like, yo, I'm like, even if you place a call to your dad, it's like, it's not for, it's not for them. It's for you. It's not for them. It's for you. Like, you know, whatever, whatever, it, whatever it is, it's like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what, uh, what the other person does. It's about what you do. If you feel like you want to. Place a call to place a call. You know, if you want to talk, you want to talk. If that person doesn't, it is what it is, bro. But don't, don't, don't carry that shit around with you every day because that ain't helping nobody. No, that's, that's it, that's, though. Let's that's end it, it there.